Welcome to a tour of it on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show how to combine and search strings in SugarCube 2.36. So we learned in a previous video how strings are another data structure within JavaScript. They allow us to store letters, numbers, and special characters in enclosed quotation marks, single quotation marks or double quotation marks. We also know that anytime we're using SugarCube, we're also using JavaScript. And so we can access lots of the data structures within JavaScript through SugarCube. And we've now seen that strings are among those. One of the common things we use with strings is a concept called concatenation. This simply means to put strings together. And this can be incredibly useful if we have one string value produced from one macro and another string value produced from a different macro. We want to combine them together. We want to perform concatenation. So let's have an example of that. Let's say, for example, you had two uses of the text box macro within SugarCube. In one, you're storing a temporary variable into first name. In the second one, you're storing a different temporary variable named last name. And then you want to combine them together. So right here, I have a temporary variable called name, which is combined to first name and last name, which is a Western approach to doing this, but it shows how we would do it. Take one variable plus another variable. In this case, we have first name plus space plus last name, including a kind of space between them. So producing one name from two different values, two different temporary variables, one different string value. We are performing concatenation by putting them all together, adding them all together. And then of course, we're right here using the replace macro to update this division element down here based on its ID. So that's what the little hash is, name and name match up. So what I want to do, of course, is type in a first name, type in a last name. When I click update name, it would combine them together and then show their result to the reader or player. So if we go ahead and build and play example one, we see by default it has first name and last name, which is what it showed right here. That's the second part of this, first name and last name. And if I go ahead and click on update name, then it's going to say hello, first name, last name, which is exactly what we want to see. So if I replace this with, I don't know, let's say Steve, and then down here, let's say, I don't know, Fred, update name, Steve Fred, right? And performing concatenation by combining string values. And this is, again, very, very useful when working with macros in SugarCube that might produce string values. Among those, text box, and of course, text area is its sister macro. So we can get reader input, player input, combine them, and do things with them. Now I showed you we can combine them. The other thing that we can do thing with them is potentially search through it. So we also saw in a previous video that the method includes that we normally use with arrays also applies to strings. And of course, the reason for this is because in earlier programming languages, strings didn't exist as a data structure. They were simply another type of array. If we wanted to have an array of characters, of letters and numbers and things, we would just have that, but it would be an array and it wouldn't be a string. In JavaScript, strings are an actual thing. They are their own data structure, but they build off of many of the things we would use with arrays, one of which is the method includes. So we want to know, is one of the things we're searching for a single letter, number, or word or phrase, is it included in some larger string? So let's look at a much more complicated example. Let's say, for example, you wanted to get some type of password from a reader or player, maybe part of a game, part of some other thing, potentially a kind of teaching exercise. So in this case, I have one rule. It must contain a question mark. So I'm doing something a little bit complicated here. But first, I'm setting up two different variables, password and previous password. Then I'm asking for a password using the text box macro right here. And then I'm doing something a little weird. So right here, using the silently macro, so that we'll get rid of the, any normal lines that the macros would produce, I'm saying repeat right here, this whole section right here, every 50 milliseconds. So fairly quickly, repeating, repeating, repeating. If there's ever a case where previous password does not equal current password, and if we ever change this up here, they will not be equal to each other, then test if password right here includes question mark is false which is to say it does not include a question mark. Then set warnings to does not contain a question mark. Otherwise, else, set warnings to an empty string. Then go ahead and update the previous password. Then right here, 
replace the content of warnings, which is way down here as a division element. So what this is going to do is whenever we type in the text box, it will take that input. Whenever we click out of it, so notice this is click or touch out of the input area. So as soon as we click out of it, it's then going to check behind the scenes right here. And if they're not equal to what they previously was, it's going to check to see if it includes a question mark. And if it does not, then it's going to tell us it doesn't. And if it does, it's not going to tell us anything at all. So let's go ahead and run example two. So right here, example two, build and play. So right here, they're equal to each other, doesn't say anything. I'm gonna go ahead and click in here. And then I need to have a password that contains a question mark. So if I just type capital F and click out, it doesn't contain a question mark. If I get rid of that and click out, it still doesn't contain a question mark. So if I type a question mark and click out, it does. So if I type other things around this, A and D's and F's and G's and whatever else, as long as it contains a question mark, it's totally valid and we don't see that warning down here. Now we could make this much, much more complex. We could ask for a certain number of lowercase letters and uppercase letters and special symbols of all kinds of things, but this is the same general idea of searching text. We're using the includes method as part of strings to check to see if some substring is in some larger string. We're also combining it with, in this case, the repeat macro to continually check things. Repeat and repeat and repeat to some relatively small number right here in the milliseconds. So as soon as this, as soon as someone clicks out of this, what's called losing focus, as soon as it loses focus, we're able to check this code right here, produce some type of warning for them. And this is one of a couple of different ways we could approach checking some type of text box input before doing something with it. So in the case of wanting to get a certain password from a user or input from a user, we could set things up this way, continually check things, and whenever they click out of it, then check it for them in real time, showing them if it's what in, if it is within some range we want or is some value we want before doing something with it. Now, this is in contrast to something we saw over here in example one. Notice we got content right here, and then we asked for user interaction to click a link and then show them the results. So either example one, where they do various inputs and then click a link, or example two, where we use down here the repeat macro to kind of run in the background and check things and then respond accordingly in the same passage. These are two extremes of approaching this problem, which say the first is you ask for multiple interactions. The second is you run something like the repeat macro or other approaches behind the scenes to kind of constantly check things. And then once they come within the range or threshold you want, you then respond, give them a warning, or allow them to progress with a story. So we can combine and search text and create much more complex things based on how we understand strings, and especially in relationship to how we understand arrays covered in a previous video. So arrays and strings are similar data structures, but are different, and strings are incredibly powerful, especially because multiple macros in SugarCube return strings which means we can combine, search, and work with string values all within SugarCube, which of course is built on top of JavaScript within Twine itself. Thanks for watching.